Hello, this is Joe and welcome back to the channel. In tonight's video, I'm gonna be capturing M78. It's a reflection nebula in the Orion constellation or near the Orion constellation. To be completely honest, I haven't looked it up. I'm pretty sure that's where it's at. And I'm gonna be using the Edge HD8 so that we get real close up on the two big bright stars that are lighting up that, that dust up there in space. The important part though, is that I'm gonna be using the CEM120 mount that I fixed. Yes, I got it repaired, or I repaired it with the help of Ioptron's tech support. I thought it was a lost cause for sure, and <laughs> little did I know, they've got a PDF for everything. With the help of Ioptron tech support and OPT, I can't say enough about both of them. They were both fantastic and amazing to work with. I really thought, and <laughs> I was really getting worried that I, my major purchase of getting the new observatory mount, um, it was just going really bad. And I called OPT a few times and they were super helpful every time I called. I also called Ioptron a few times and the tech support you have to get through email, but this awesome gentleman, his name is Roger Rivers, was able to help me and get me going. So I'm gonna run down real quick what I did to fix the CEM120 for anyone who's interested or has a CEM120 and has never really taken it apart or, or thought about how the internals work. It was really cool um, that I got to do this in a way and of course in another way it's not because most people, they order something brand new, including myself, and you just want a really good working mount. You, you don't want to have to start uh, tinkering with it or tearing it apart. Now, I kind of enjoy this type type of thing. So to me, it wasn't, you know, the end of the world or anything, but I could see where a lot of people would just have a lot of issues with, with doing what I had to do. Uh, the first thing I did was remove the Lozmandi dovetail mounting plate. And after that, I removed the electronics that go with it. And that was only because uh, the, the in through the mount cabling, uh, was connected in and I just wanted to hang off the box I didn't want all the weight from the whole plate weighing down on those cables and I just went ahead and left the cables connected and worked around them the next thing I did was uh, remove the actual dovetail adapter um, to the deck axis itself then the next thing I did was remove the the little locking pin that locks the switch into place and I moved the cover I released the cover on the top of the deck axis. Once I took the plate off, I could tell that when I moved the gear switch about 60 degrees towards the locking position, that's where I could see that the hole um, was lining up. And so I wasn't sure exactly what was wrong. My first instinct was that, you know, the plates, the, the holes in all the plates in the metal were wrong, but I knew that you know, going through a factory, uh, everything was already set. So I doubted that that could be what the problem was. So I went ahead and I removed the entire switch from the mount and uh, the little ball bearing popped out in my hand, which I was expecting it to do. But it's still a little nerve wracking because I have none, none of these uh, spare parts. So if I lost a small part or something, then that meant that I had to wait weeks in order to get uh, replacement parts back from my Optron. And I went ahead and I put it back in and um, the way the instruction said to reinsert it. And I just slid the deck cover plate back over just to see if I was able to access the hole and everything lined up perfectly. So I wish I had like a smoking gun to, yeah, this is what the problem was because I don't. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know enough about these mounts yet to tell what it was, but I know that removing the switch and putting it back, basically just reseating everything, um, fixed my issue. And I went ahead and I put the mount back together again and started guiding that night. And now my deck axis is, is solid. The tech support at Ioptron is just fantastic to work with. And they were a pleasure to talk to. We started talking about guiding and they're actually grabbing a bunch of my logs and they're gonna look at those. They're gonna do some testing to see if they could get the mount to lock up like I did. Uh, they're pretty sure it's a software issue. So I'm not really worried anymore about having a bad mount. I, it's probably just in software. So they're gonna be doing testing on that. I'll be sure to keep you updated when I hear something as well. So M78 happens to be one of the 
brightest reflection nebulas in what they call the Orion B Molecular Cloud Complex. That is such a cool name. Uh, and it's about 1,350 light years away from here. I'm super excited to give it a shot now that I've finally got this mount working. And I've tried to take the M78 before in the past. I never really get a good M78. And I, I, the, the last couple times I took it, it was with the, with the Z81, William Optics Z81, with a much wider field view. And I don't think that I ever spend enough time on each sub exposure for where I live and, and the equipment that I'm using. So what I'm gonna try to do tonight is to take 10 minute long sub exposures in RGB and then do five minute long sub exposures in luminance. And I know that I'm pretty sure I'm gonna blow out my stars. That's okay, I can actually use Star Exterminator or even the new Starnet Plus Plus version two. I might give that a shot, I haven't tried it yet. Uh, and I'll do that in linear so that I can put the stars back and when I put them back I just won't I won't blow them out to where they would normally be blown out in these images so I think I got that taken care of but the great thing about being able to take these very long sub exposures is that I could really bring out all the dust in that reflection nebula and hopefully get a lot of detail in that dust as well uh, that's my hope I don't know how it's going to go because um, the last couple times I've done M78, it's, I lackluster images in my opinion. And so I'm, I'm really hoping that I can get something good. I was taking some darks earlier, so I have the telescope covered up. I did notice that I took my, my last set of darks that I took was last May. And now it's February. So they've lasted about 10 months. And the last set of data that I tried to uh, calibrate with them, it didn't come out too well. Uh, you could see the you could definitely see the amp glow in the 295 or 294, which you could normally never see. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the observatory open, and you'll notice that with my new mount, um, it's a little bit lower than the EQ6, and that's because I don't need the full rat's cage that I had on the EQ6 because I don't have to get up underneath it and, and screw it in at the bottom. So that's kind of nice. Um, and I'm actually able to just barely clear my telescope with the dew shield on, which I couldn't do before. So I'm pretty happy about that. So we got the roof open. Now I'm gonna go ahead and load in our target for the night in Nina, and then we'll slew over and we'll get started. It's a pretty clear night. There's a, a little bit of haze around the moon. For M78, I don't have a whole lot of time before it goes down below the observatory wall. So real quick, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do um, six, um, each of RGB and then at 10 minutes. So that's an hour each for them. That's three hours. And then I'm going to do 20 subs of luminance at five minutes. So that will bring me up to about a quarter to midnight. And at that point, I might actually even lose, I think I have until about 1130. So I, I might lose a sub or two of luminance depending on uh, my calculations and the degrees that I think it's going to. So I'm going to get that going. We're going to move over to plate solving and now I'm going to have to turn my light off uh, or my, the plate solving will probably work but I don't think it's going to play well with the focuser with this light on. Just doing the plate solve now. Um, I normally use Aztap and tonight I'm using plate solve 2. Um, I noticed that the Plate Solve 2 works a little bit better in certain situations. The ASTAP is much faster though, so I normally use it. 
Okay, so we're all centered up. I'm gonna go ahead and let this do its autofocus and get this light shut off and head on into the house. So overall, I got about three nights worth of data on M78 and now the moon's getting too bright for RGB data again. But the image turned out pretty much the way I expected it to. And you know, there's always room for improvement and that's what makes this hobby so great because next year I'll get to try again and improve on the image that I took this year. And that's pretty much what I've been doing for the last few years is just improving and I hope it shows. What I was really excited about though is that the mount's performing amazingly well. I'm very excited about it. I'm very happy that I was able to get it repaired. And I wanted to thank everyone who stuck to, through this far in the video. I know the video was a little all over the place with me repairing the mount and also trying to capture a target. But I kind of wanted to do both. It's been a while since I've even been able to do a video because of all of my mount issues and, and troubleshooting everything. So I also wanted to give a huge shout out to everyone who has joined my channel and the, the members have really made a difference. And, and I just want to say I really appreciate it. So thank you so much for joining the channel. And this month I'm going to be putting a bonus data set out there. I'm going to be putting the masters for M78 because I know a lot of people don't have the opportunity to take 10 minute long sub exposures in RGB. So hopefully uh, you'll get a chance to play around with that. And if anybody decides to pro go ahead and process that data, I'd love to see it. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a like. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please consider doing so. It really does help. And we'll see you in the next video.